Thank you for listening to today's Veterans Christian Fellowship Devotional Bible Study revealed to us by the Father. Please click the link in the description to read along, and be sure to look up and study the reference scriptures throughout. Our scripture reading today begins in Isaiah chapter 12. I'll be reading verses 1 through 6 in the New King James Version. And in that day you will say, O Lord, I will praise you. Though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day, you will say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his deeds among the peoples. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord. For he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, O inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. God reveals so much about Himself to us in His Holy Word. He has preserved His Word for us in the Holy Bible in order that we may come to Jesus and know Him. The Bible makes it clear that spiritual matters cannot be discerned by human wisdom, but that they must be revealed to us by God Himself. In Matthew 16, Jesus asks His disciples, Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah the Son of the living God. Jesus replies, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. The Bible contains numerous prophecies regarding the coming Messiah in the Old Testament, and Jesus gives explicit confirmation about who he is throughout the Gospels. In John chapter 1, verse 18, the Apostle John says, No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Jesus, the visible image of the invisible God, was born of a virgin and walked among mankind to make himself known to all who would hear. In John chapter 6, verses 44-46, through 46, Jesus said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from Him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only He has seen the Father. Here we have the Holy Trinity expressed in just a few short verses. God the Father reveals truth by God the Holy Spirit and draws us into a trusting relationship of growing faith with God the Son so that we may be saved by His grace. Spiritual truth can only be received by anyone through the Holy Spirit. This is why most of the world misses the truth of Christ as they strive to discern spiritual wisdom through human logic and understanding. Just as something as foundational as the Trinity, that those with spiritual discernment can receive as truth, can be so very confusing from a worldview lens, and even some denominations that profess Christ as Lord misconstrue this biblical truth. Human wisdom is very flawed especially in discerning spiritual matters, as everyone has a beginning and end on this earth, and is therefore completely incapable of understanding the mind of an eternal God apart from Christ. Conversely, God is everlasting to everlasting and omniscient. He literally knows all. Spiritual truth was of the utmost importance to Jesus. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. In John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Jesus wants all mankind to know that he is the truth. In John chapter 8, verse 24, Jesus said, For unless you believe that I am who I claim to be, you will die in your sins. The Lord is saying that faith in the true Jesus is essential for salvation, and he issued several warnings about false Christs, false prophets, false teachers, and false doctrines. The true Jesus is revealed in his word, and the Holy Spirit confirms this truth when God calls. Many wrestle with this because of the deception that abounds in this fallen world and their futile attempts to understand in their own wisdom apart from the Word of God and Holy Spirit discernment. 
In fact, when speaking with the Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus said, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. We must notice that Jesus says, must, here. Spirit and truth imply that there's no deception mixed in, and that ways of the world, secular practices, and human wisdom have no place in true worship. It must be God's word and way. About 700 years before the birth of Christ, Isaiah prophesied much about the coming Messiah. The prophet is quoted a reference several times in the New Testament, largely due to the fact that his scriptures written under the law have such a clear view of God's grace. And the Apostle John wrote that grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 59, verses 15 through 21, we read prophecy about God's grace in light of the sinful nature of helpless mankind and his plan of salvation through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Redeemer. Truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm achieved salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate, and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garment of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. According to what they have done, so will he repay wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. From the west, people will fear the name of the Lord, and from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent-up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you will not depart from you, and my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips, on the lips of your children, and on the lips of their descendants, from this time on and forever, says the Lord. Isaiah 7.14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. In Matthew chapter 1, verses 20-21, through 21, we read how the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Verses 22-23 through 23 go on to say, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Emmanuel, God with us, has come to save his people from their sins. Thus the name Jesus, a transliteration of the Greek form of the Hebrew name Yeshua, which means the Lord saves, to rescue or to deliver. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. It is God himself who saves, and God who places his spirit in those who are truly Christ's disciples to seal us up until the day of redemption to keep us on his path of righteousness and life eternal. The word of God makes it clear that salvation requires faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus asks each of us, who do you say I am? Only God the Father can provide the true answer, and there is only one answer that leads to salvation.
Thank you.